Hi. <laughs> I was distracted by captioning. Okay, yes, we're recording. It's uh, Binary Jazz, and here we are. Uh, it's a podcast with some folks uh, that live on the internet uh, making contact for content for artificial intelligence that's our new tagline is we make content for art hey we're all wearing gray today it's a gray day this is actually like green I, oh I was <laughs> sorry it's okay it looks gray on the tv the tv i don't know the screen <laughs> and- so Yes. One of the fun things about this timing is that the sun is shifting to my window, so in a moment, I'm going to just have this glow about me. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm... You always have a glow about you. Thanks. <laughs> Angelic. <laughs> oh, boy. Lots yeah, hey, I, I wanted to talk to you guys about this cool project that I really think that you should uh, back. It's the Baylights Project. Um <laughs> love art <laughs> sorry that was a very inside joke for uh just just the people on on i mean Approx- approximately three people yeah well. approximately three people <laughs> yeah there there are at least dozens more around the world that would get that yeah probably don't listen at least to dozens the show yeah exactly but if you are if you are give us welcome. a shout out yeah and uh let us let us know where you're tuning in from yeah, we we have a contact form on the website. Uh, nobody uses it, but it. But our website is at binaryjazz.com. You can talk to us. You can download episodes. You can oh. do all sorts of things. We will respond to comments if you leave us some feedback or ask us questions. I'm glad we're having this conversation. Um, yeah, Chris, I want to get some time in your calendar so we can move to the oh user. right. Been working on that since January. <laughs> not that feedback. That's not fun feedback. Yeah, that's not the feedback we we want on the con. That's not the content we want on the podcast. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, we could do that. That would be a very dull uh, episode of Gary and Chris. Uh, we should we should record that as a supplemental episode. <laughs> <laughs> that extra release for. It, for it would it would be very boring. There'd be a lot of like uh. <laughs> But it Wait, could be like what? it could be like co-working, like when people just want sort of like <laughs> just regular noise in the background of people. <laughs> like and coffee shop part, noise. I'm just imagining I'm just imagining somebody downloading that to their podcast app and then like playing it just as background noise, I guess. Maybe maybe we just become ASMR at that point. Yeah. Here's how it would start though. It would start out like uh okay, we're recording. Hey, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and then it would be like big blocks of silence while stuff happened, like clicking and typing, and then sporadic conversation, and then, mm-hmm. and it's done. And now we've summed up this this addendum episode, uh, so you don't need to listen to it if it does show up on the internet. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be like an hour supplemental with like fifteen words. <laughs> I'd, I'd watch it. A lot of a lot of breathing. I background it. I, I put it in the background of my. <laughs> All right, is it loading for you? It's weird. I just... Wait, did you change your Etsy hosts file? <laughs> this is such compelling content. I can't even right? stand it. Right. Um. Can I make Can I make a small announcement? Yes. Okay. Uh, History.nasa.gov uh, has now been consolidated into the new. Uh, CMS as of Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, one day this week. It doesn't matter. Nobody knows. It doesn't. <laughs> so Who when cares? you do that, um, when you do that, when you when you pull in something that was previously an entirely different site into the main site, are you doing it like subdirectory? Is it like a multi-site sort of thing? No. Is it like you're just pulling content from the first thing and putting it into the other thing so that like all the content it's, is there? It's pretty... It's pretty white glove, so it depends from site to site. So history, there's a lot of stuff that is preserved as is because it is actually a historical artifact in the history of NASA. Um, uh, two such pieces, the Apollo Flight Journal and the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, go check them out, um, are, are just amazing and continually updated as people um, find better ways 
to restore audio and visual recordings of those missions and document further things that were previously undiscovered, like to this day. Um, uh, but also a lot of pieces um, are, um, um, you know, moved to the new CMS as first class, you know, WordPress content. Um, some pieces are left in their own special place. It's It sort of depends on the nature of the thing being migrated in, but it becomes part of the primary CMS. No longer an idle, 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 uh, isolated thing. It's an idol? Yes. I I, I formerly worshipped uh, history.nasa.gov, but I no longer can. I mean, that, it's assimilated that sounds to sounds legit. We all knew that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. I feel like you have the, well, I don't know. This is a contest of most productive week maybe goes to Gary as far as like... Oh, well, my week was not productive at all. Yeah. This was the same and thing I started on when I started here. So it's taken a year and X months to get to this point. So so it is a big finish line. Yeah. Uh, if for me and for uh, Michelle on the project and um, three dozen other people on the internet. More a different three dozen. three dozen other people. There's more Probably no overlap. People. Um, Some overlap. Yeah. There's definitely Wait, a... with each yeah. other? Three dozen? There's some overlap between the three dozen that would consume the history NASA site and the less than that probably that would get the joke that was told at the top of the episode. Oh. Yeah. Probably. I have to answer a question my wife asked. Hold on. Now we were just... Uh, Gary... Uh, staring at the screen and us staring awkwardly at each other. Stage of the. Did you did you update the Etsy hosts file? No. <laughs> That's gonna make me. I'm I'm gonna say that at some point to my family, and they're gonna be like, they're gonna be what? like Etsy. What? Yeah. yeah. Why is so. it called Etsy? Like not dot not etc, but like the site Etsy. <laughs> Probably because somebody was changing their Etsy hosts file and like, we should create a site called Etsy. And that was it, you know? And we're going to sell bespoke. Doilies. Who cares what we sell? We'll just start an internet thing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. The, the, content of, the content doesn't matter. Remember when content was king? No. Do you remember that phrase back from like the, oh God, early 2000s? Content is king. Mm -hmm. Now AI is king. I, um, um I made the discovery that someone in my cohort, like for school, is was born in two thousand. Wow! Yeah, that like That's really blew my mind. I was just like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we were talking about like slang, and she was just like, oh yeah, like millennial slang. I just don't get. And I was just like, how old are you? <laughs> I thought we were peers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that would break me for a little while. It really did. It's really fascinating. And it's also really hilarious to talk about slang with different genres. Uh, I guess, let me consult my calendar. Yeah, I guess if they were born in 24, they're 23 or 24 years old at this point. Yeah, That mathematically checks mm -hmm. out, which doesn't mm -hmm. seem right. Mm -hmm. The year 2000 just happened like three or four New Year's ago, right? There was a really cool, uh, there was a really funny moment where okay so so again we're going to go back to chris watches critical role um chris also watches a lot of stuff on dropout and one of the shows on dropout is called dirty laundry where it's sort of like a how could i it's sort of like a, a truth or dare sort of thing ish there, there's other games there's, there's some game i can't i can't think of it but it basically is like there is a secret that belongs to someone in the room and mm. everybody needs to guess on who who that secret belongs to basically and um one of the, and they were doing it with the cast of critical role um and one of the uh members of the critical role cast was talking about 9 11 because he was talking about how he did this weird stupid thing he brought something on a on a plane and he's like surely they, mm. they wouldn't allow that now but this is before 9 11 and they're like well wait how long ago was it and he's like you know three or four years ago and they're like 
when do you think 9-11 happened? <laughs> it's like three or four years ago. I mean, it's like, you know, pretty. It's well, like, maybe it was three or four no. years ago. Green, Green Day just dropped a new album, so it is only three or four years ago. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> and Sublime is touring again. So, you know. I, I'm, I'm, uh, oh, I'm going to try on some a millennial sign. I'm low key excited about this uh green day is, album. is is low-key uh uh a millennial slang specifically i don't know i have no idea Speaking of which sleater kitty has a new album as well <laughs> while we're going while, while we're, we're going yeah. yeah 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 it's so uh when i when i was in, in the 80s <laughs> sorry in, in the 80s and 90s there was this thing <laughs> called classic rock right we all remember <laughs> classic rock my dad used to define classic rock is uh, as bands that at le- have at least one band member who has deceased. And mm-hmm. pretty much throughout most of the 80s and 90s, that was a pretty good, accurate descriptor. Like somebody in like all the classic rock bands that you can think of, somebody was probably dead. Like you could pretty much guarantee it. But now that definition doesn't fly anymore. Uh, unless we're going to like expand classic rock to include like Prince and David Bowie, which it very much should not include those artists. <laughs> and and my whole like my my whole concept of like what music, like how it works, uh, is still in this frame of mind uh, uh, of like, like, oh, yeah, classic rock is this sort of thing. And so it doesn't really compute that like Sleater Kenny, like what their debut was like 92 or something like they should be classic rock by the actual definition of classic rock but like we're not calling it that because that would be i don't know make us feel old because like classic rock was like our parents music i don't know i mean yeah but also like classic Classic rock is is like a genre classic post-punk yeah yeah i think that works (laughs) It's just old people music, I think, is, is what it comes down to. Old people music is just a shifting uh, uh, window of of just depending on on who who falls into the elder category for this particular. I said something about the eighties, um, and Charlotte is learning about. I don't know what she's learning about in school. Centuries, I don't know something, and she said, the nineteen eighties or the eighteen eighties. Like, excellent burn charlotte excellent burn <laughs> what in the world <laughs> you're like how old do you think i am <laughs> i mean at her age like you don't that that doesn't happen that natural calculation but the 1980s or the 1880s the one right, that well, i lived through oh wait that's not a good uh that's not a good <laughs> yeah how old yeah how old do you think i am i don't know like a hundred well okay <laughs> at least a hundred you, you knew abe lincoln right <laughs> my mom brought a bunch of papers and nostalgic stuff that i was going through and like some stuff being like oh forget why did i even save this toss recycle and some stuff that i was like oh this is kind of fun to keep i'll look back on this in like five more years ten more years and rem- and then toss again. it and um i found this i found a card that my like school supervisor slash chemistry teacher wrote me and in the card and it's so funny to me now but at the time I definitely didn't clock the that it wasn't it wasn't weird at the time I guess because I was younger he was just like in all my 38 years of life like this is my best advice and and I was just like he was only 38 (laughs) when I was in high school I thought all the teachers were just like 65. I don't know, so much older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this far from the nursing home. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, I was taking advice and knowledge from someone who was younger yeah. than I am now. Like, Why like would I do that? 10 years older than me or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I had, so a number of um, the people that I went to high school with became teachers or entered like the education thing and one of them actually teaches at the high school that we attended um oh, i and, have a friend that does that as well yeah. yeah and um it's weird and when she started 
teaching there, I had that moment of like, oh, right, because that's a thing. Yeah. Like people can do that. Like people and like I don't know about you, but my teachers friends, were like, not like like peers with teachers that we had that were yes. still there. And I was yeah. like, what? You're calling them by their first names? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did have a couple like younger teachers that didn't that that like broke that sort of line that automatically like exists between students and teachers, um, you know, and they were like the cool teachers or whatever. But like, yeah, by and large, they're like alien life forms that are just infinitely older than than yeah. you. And yeah, so it's always so, yeah, it was a really weird like, oh, and you're and, and, and you're teaching English at the school that you studied English at. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I remember distinctly, uh, I don't know why I remember this distinctly, but it's weird. Like that I, I thought my teacher had to live at school because that's where the teacher yeah. was. Right. Um, kindergarten, first monks. grade, probably uh, sixth grade. I don't know when it happened when I realized, but um, I mean, yeah. So for, like we would drive past the screw, for, school perhaps and I would two wave. of us that was actually true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know about your experience, uh, Allison, but like I do think many of the priests and nuns at my Catholic school did live at school. So Oh yeah. At, at boarding school, like a lot of my teachers lived on campus. So that was like an added layer of Yeah. Oh, you see them at dinner <laughs> when you're Ugh. supposed to be doing something else. <laughs> but like Ugh. To your point, Gary, like my mom was like a primary school teacher and like she would run into parents and their kids at, in the supermarket and they would con they like they would be, be stunned into silence. Yes. Because like, they'd just be like, why is she not at school? Like. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that funny? Like. Like it, it's it's like a, a cool understanding of like how our brains develop like at a certain point well yeah obviously this person is a human and has to do human things like eat so grocery and, shopping. like not teach all the time yeah. yeah um but but like at that age like you know well no they're just magical they just stay here and teach constantly just like parents are infinite but do you find that like i'm still that way in certain contexts like for instance like i don't expect to see people in other contexts so like for instance like when I drive with someone who I've never been in a car with before. And I'm like, Oh yeah, you drive. Like, that's a thing. Like <laughs> it would happen if I was in a car with either one of you, I'd be like, Oh yeah. Like that's something you guys do on a regular basis. <laughs> but like, when you get to the first red light, Allison would be like, Gary, I'm getting out. Take it personally <laughs> or don't, I don't care. Well, there have been <laughs> yeah. some stories that have made me rethink driving with you, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, oh, when was it? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, earlier this week, I was driving, and um, I was I was coming up to a red light, and I was deep in thought, which I don't know. I mean, I, I, here, here's an opportunity to be present. I come up to a red light, and I'm deep in thought, and so I stopped, and I looked both ways, and I started to go before I realized this is not a stop sign. This is a red light, and it's a it's a traffic yeah. light I hit constantly. But in my brain, I was like, stop sign, stop sign, stop sign, red light, stop sign, stop. It, but the only light, I'm like, eh, all right, I stopped. And I started to roll forward, and I'm like, <laughs> so. Uh, fortunately, You're like, I've done the stop part. I can go yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, fortunately, I'm rural. And, you know, at 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 10 a.m. on a Tuesday or whatever it was, there's not a lot of people on the road around here. We have a four-way stop down the hill from us, and nobody knows how to, nobody knows how to do it. <laughs> because what winds up happening is four cars like all convene at once. A immediately yeah yeah and then <laughs> then it's like i don't know it's, it's a pure canadian standoff of everyone being like you go no you go you go you go and i'm like somebody's gotta go we're gonna be here all day like <laughs> yeah but it's um, more like it's more like you go a eh? you go, you go. <laughs> it's a, a rounder o <laughs> I love to um, laugh with Rhonda about traffic. Like if like on a Friday, like, oh, let's go get dinner. And I'm like, oh my God, traffic's going to be terrible. Which means like, it's there's possible. Car, one car. Well, no, there's times where you might actually get like Two. a full cycle of a light. Because there's four cars full at it. Full cycle of a light. And like, 
And I will always comment, like, there's a lot of traffic out today. And it's like, you're looking like a quarter mile in each direction. And there's like four cars. Yeah. Well, uh, we we just got a pretty big uh, dumping of snow in the last week. And um, what happens in Utah every time it snows or the first major snow is immediately everybody starts complaining about how badly Utah drivers are in snow. Mm -hmm. um, which... I don't even know it's accurate because I've seen videos of Seattle drivers in snow. <laughs> it's really icy up here in our in in the Pacific Northwest defense. Yeah, well, sure. I mean, and and the thing is that like, you know, we've we've driven through through snow over the mountains uh in like Oregon and Washington um and at least in Oregon they don't I mean, we probably had this conversation before. They don't plow when it's snowing. They plow when it's done. So, if you hit it when it's snowing, then yeah, it just it just sucks. I I was gonna say I don't know if I've shared this story or not, but then I realized I have because it was like the second week we were doing the show, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um well then and it's that retro is... because that was eight years ago. No. I think That's so. True. <laughs> well, we're on season six and we skipped breaking a season, which means it was seven. So it's probably <laughs> Yeah. I have no concept of time. <laughs> yeah. No, that was like three or four years ago we started this. Right? No. Um. <laughs> anyway, I was driving to see my brother and his family uh, in the van with our family. Uh, and uh, it was snowing in Georgia on the interstate. And of course, Georgia has no idea what to do. And people in Georgia have no idea what to do. So like we're going across like – I'm in like the right-hand lane like driving at a sensible speed because I have – I clearly have no idea what the hell I'm doing. None at all. Sure, sure. Um. And I'm watching people like off the road and mm -hmm. off the road. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not staying in the interstate. It's going way too fast. So we're going to take like, you know, state roads from here, which in hindsight probably was also not the best approach, but whatever. Uh -huh. um, at some Can't point, confirm. the interstate's at a complete stop. And um, we're at a complete stop. And this, we're heading north. And this snowplow comes flying past me. Like, how is there a snowplow south of where I am in Georgia coming up this way? Like it's Georgia. They own like a single snowplow in the <laughs> entire state. Um, and so it was going to, to rescue the day. Then I got off and I was on the uh, state road and there was a point where it's like coming down, coming down, coming down. And I'm like, this is, this is serious. I don't know what I'm doing. And I was holding the wheel so tightly and like every little like shimmy at 20 miles an hour, you know, I'm like, don't don't do make no sudden movements. Like don't surprise the snow. I guess I don't know. I'm not sure how that works. So I'm laying in bed that night and like I can't sleep because I keep like thinking like I'm gonna put this van in a ravine. Like I was just it was like I had like post traumatic stress from from driving in the snow and not knowing what I was doing. Did I ever tell y'all about the fun snow driving experience I had coming back from work uh, when I worked in Park City? So it's down the the mountain and it was in the middle. It was basically like whiteout conditions um, and it was late. It was like after closing. Uh, so it was probably like 10, 10, 30 or something at night. So there wasn't, there were no plows. It had been snowing for a while. Um, it was pretty thick. It was basically whiteout um, and I had no chains. <laughs> <laughs> so because it was fine going up it wasn't a problem going up i don't even know we might have had i don't think we even had snow tires uh we just had regular like tires like all weather or whatever uh it was it was the most uh i would say educational snow driving experience <laughs> i've ever had because like like not only could I not see, like, usually, like, if, if there's cars on the road, even if it's coming down, you can at least see, like, the red taillights of the car in front of you. There was not. And this is not, like, a straight highway. It's, like, winding through the mountains. And, like, luckily there's no, like, sides where there's, like, a sheer cliff, like, a drop on the other side, because that would be terrifying. But I was definitely, like, I have no idea where the lines are. I have no idea where the road is. I'm just going to drive mm. in a direction like pick one and then wait until i'm in the middle of the road and then like because i did that like i just picked a direction and kept driving and all of a sudden i'm in the middle of the road like over where the center divider is i'm like okay need to go in a different direction Correct. <laughs> yeah. oh that's the that's like pit and it's slipping. kind of driving it's slipping and it's sliding and i'm going like 20 miles an hour or something like <laughs> just 
And you try putting on the, the high beams, like you think that's going to make a difference. And no, that makes it worse. <laughs> Somehow it's like, like maybe it's brighter, but it's darker. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're like, oh, great. Now I can see how little I can see. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. It's great to be able to see these snowflakes directly in front of the car. That's that's that one's really pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have this week we've we've had temperatures below 20 most mornings. Um, so I've had to scrape ice off the window before taking Charlotte to school, which, mm-hmm. you know, wow. Do you have a good scraper? You probably don't. Uh, it's okay. Okay. It's, no, it yeah. no, it's not great. <laughs> when I push down, like I get like two, but the middle doesn't scrape. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's I guess not no, good. I guess I don't. Yeah, yeah. No, we have um we when we got the Prius, we sort of inherited whatever the scraper was that was already in the car, um, mm. and it's just like a little handheld thing. Um, which is probably very similar to what you have. So it just got has a little blade thing. Um, the other one that we have is like long and it's got a thing at the end and it's got a brush. You can brush off snow and it, you know, is good. But this one is like and it has that that problem where like if you don't get it at, at quite the right angle, it's gonna do like five parallel lines and then like skip a big block and you have to go over it a million times. So like yeah, a not def- smooth shave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. D- definitely get yourself a better one. Because that's what we need to do. I don't know if I'm going to, because we're probably all the way, we're probably most of the way through it at this point. Yeah, yeah, but next year. <laughs> that's what I do every year with, like, boots and things. I'm like, well, I only really need them, like, four days a year, so yeah. I don't feel like that's a budget, budget-friendly budget idea to get something new. <laughs> I'm like, mm. the only reason I generally keep my winter coat is because my parents live in Colorado. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> but I had to bust out my winter coat this week and i was not a happy camper <laughs> yeah it's uh charlotte has this like heavy coat and gloves and like it's i mean it's she looks like she's getting ready to head to like do research in the arctic it's it's amazing um snug and at carpool they have like a bunch of teachers outside which cracks me up to about the age of teachers so i'm like i look at them and i'm like they're so young um but like you know i guess if you're low on the totem pole you have to do carpool Uh, but in the cold days they've sent extras out so that they can take turns going inside to warm up because Hmm. no one here knows how to dress for the weather yeah Yeah, it it, yeah it is i give them a lot of credit for that they do take care of their people like Mm -hmm. the principal and the dean are uh, lovely lovely folks I just want to see how long the. Have you what? <laughs> did, did you are you sure you updated Etsy hosts? <laughs> um, I, I was, uh, how can I tell a story without it turning a sad story? <laughs> <sighs> I was asked to run or help run a grief group for my volunteer gig at hospice, so I'm starting that soon. Um which is both exciting and also similar to like, am I, am I grown up, growing up? Right. Am I adulting? Right. <laughs> so yeah, there, it wasn't sad at all. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> yeah. Having a, uh, a grief group is not a sad thing. My dad tells me stories about like, I guess he's in some sort of support group for um, other people with, um, uh, prostate cancer and he mm. hears all the stories about like their things that they're doing why do you have a pizza on your head gary i was trying to bring some levity to the yeah, sad story okay. but it yeah. took me a long time to get there so now i'm just stuck with pizza hat because the timing was bad and i feel silly about it <laughs> and it's, i think it's, those i think those peer groups can be really helpful though yeah so. yeah it's the sort of thing that i wouldn't have expected him to do because he's not the sharing type a bit more solitary yeah but maybe i mean maybe he goes there and doesn't share maybe he's just kind yeah of I, I definitely think he's he's absorbing a lot of things from what other people are saying and, and sort of like using that to help frame his experience yeah that's yeah, good so I, do, I do think it's 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 been good but like it was when he first started talking about it it was sort of surprising to me that he was doing that yeah yeah no it would surprise me if my parents did as well anything like that i'd be surprised seeing as my dad doesn't seem to understand therapy as a concept i'm like 
like going to a group would be very odd well, and <laughs> and the funny thing about it is there was a point in time um once upon a time in a galaxy far far away when he was like interested in studying like child psychology so like mm. it's not the idea that therapy is like not a concept he can consider i just don't mm. know that it's a concept that he considers for himself right which yeah. has also been obviously communicated down to me and what i like sort of carried with me for most of my you know part of my life when therapy would perhaps have been most yeah. helpful including to including up to and possibly including now mm -hmm. well i mean you know who to come talk to if you need someone to pump up pump up the jam on therapy the and jam. jokes <laughs> gary if you're gonna do weird things with their videos then i'm gonna do weird things with my video. all right uh i'll add on to that that um I started this year and have had a couple of sessions and I'm still kind of figuring out where that takes me, but um, I will. Uh, well, it's still also... pretty early, early days for you to. Yes, extremely. Report back. Yep. Yep. Um, I think now there's more questions. Oh, well, that's, makes yeah, sense. I feel like that makes, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Of and depending on the type of therapy or like whatever modalities and blah, 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 like. I mean, yeah. yeah, well, we're still discovering what that will be and mean for me. So mm -hmm. I'm in a class right now where we're supposed to be like kind of developing our personal theory of therapy or like mm. what modalities wow. we're leaning more towards and that sort of thing. And like, obviously, really cool. early days for the program as well. Yeah. So no one's expecting any concrete decisions <laughs> to be made. Um, but it is really interesting to see like people's leanings and like, my teacher had us take this kind of not a quiz but this kind of rating thing mm -hmm. and to no one's surprise I got number one for feminist theory <laughs> which is not a shocker at all but I was also shocked that it was its own module kind that of it's thing. not like integrated because, into just everything because that is how things well, work yeah I was like oh for me it's kind of like an adjective that I add on I would add on to like yeah. other things not not just oh this is feminist theory it's patriarchy and capitalism that's why you're here like <laughs> 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 I don't know anyway I just thought that was and it, it's not really its own module but in the quiz it was so yeah. it, I don't know they teach it differently in the in the class but and also, I was one of, like, two people that got it as a result in our top three. And I was like, come on, come on, gang, equality, like, equity. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I, yeah I, I I'm remember... amazed at how recent um, so many studies are in, mm. in books that I'm reading. Mm. This is like a field that's, like, blossomed in the last 25 years significantly. I think so. Or three and or I four think years. Once, I guess. once people kind of, I think different test, I don't know, test groups, test subjects. And once it started branching away from like kind of the mainstays, like people taking those ideas and running with them versus just like relying on like, oh, this is the idea. Like this is Freud. This is Jung. Like, mm. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I was going to say, like, my, um, my one psychology class that I took in freshman year in college, um, was covering all the, like, foundational psychiatric thinkers, so Freud, Skinner, Jung, yada, yada, yeah. yada, um, but even within that, like, um, I, it's in the, 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 like, figuring out where you're leaning is an interesting take because like even within that like I felt myself leaning towards like well yeah over here in this general area you know like yeah well yeah and they make certain statements where you're just like I mean like I, I'll send you the little rating thing and you, you guys can do it for yourselves if you're interested yeah that'd be awesome um yes and uh you know just statements of being like the counselor should be in a position of like sympathetic teacher or like whatever you kind of agree with <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and it's just yeah it's, I found it really interesting and especially if like I went in not I know a lot about therapy and I've been in a bunch of different types of therapy mm. but like I'm not educated as far as to like which statements would match up with which one necessarily although mm. I do believe the feminist ones were really obvious I don't think that's, <laughs> that's a shocker um but like some of the other ones, I was like, oh, I don't know what you would call that per se, like right. in the family tree. Um, so going in without that knowledge was kind of more helpful for me because I was just going in reading statements instead of being like, oh, is this existential? Is this this? Mm -hmm. like Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.